Christ's command to his followers before his ascension to heaven was for them to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Our Lord did not intend for the good news of his death and resurrection to stay local, but instead it was to be taken globally. In this third section of Acts, the adventure continues as the gospel is taken to the ends of the earth. Let's join Scott Pauley now for today's study. Before we return to Acts today, I want to draw your attention to one verse in the book of Romans because really it is the principle we're about to see in Acts chapter number 11. It really is the principle we are studying at this phase of our study, walking through the book of Acts, and it's found in Romans chapter number 1. In Paul's own testimony about the work of the gospel, I've quoted a portion of this verse several times recently in our study, but I want you to mark it in your Bible and in your thinking. It's Romans chapter 1, verse number 16, where Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. And here's the phrase I want to draw to your attention. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. God's plan and purpose through the ages has always been to his chosen people, the chosen nation of Israel, but not just to them, through them, to the whole world. I I don't know about you. I sure am glad for the also in this verse because I am in the also. Don't you love to find yourself in the Bible? And also to the Greek. I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I have experienced the power of the gospel. It has changed my heart. Why? Because someone got it to me, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now look at Acts chapter number 11, because the Bible tells us in Acts 11 verse 19, now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phenis and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. Do you see the the divine order. And by the way, the order comes out of disorder. They're scattered. They're persecuted. They're running for their lives. They're being chased out of town. God was working. Remember, God was working in the scattering of the people to scatter the gospel message. And so through that disorder comes this beautiful order. In Acts chapter 11, verse 19, they preach to the Jews only. But in verse 20, the very next verse, Uh, Some of them began to speak to the Grecians, to the Greeks, also to the Greeks. And what are they preaching? The same Christ. See, the same Messiah, the same Savior. Uh, There are not many ways to God. There is one way to God. His name is Jesus Christ. Uh, Good for the Jew, good for the Greek. Uh, They're preaching the Lord Jesus. And listen to verse 21. And the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Oh, friend, When you just preach Jesus, just preach Jesus. When you just preach Jesus, the hand of the Lord will be with you. When you just preach Jesus, a great number will believe. When you just preach Jesus, people will turn to the Lord. Don't preach yourself. Don't preach your ideas. Don't preach some movement. Don't preach a church. Preach the person of Jesus Christ, and you will see God at work. We continue, verse 22. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. We've studied Barnabas already. We've actually looked at this text already when we talked about him. Uh, I want you to see something bigger than Barnabas because it's bigger than Barnabas. It's the work of God. It's bigger than any one of us. It's the church of the living God. And the Bible says in verse number 24 that much people was added unto the Lord. It's growing. It's growing because God is working in both Jews and in the Gentiles. This is what the miracle of the church is. Paul would later write about the Jew, the Gentile, and the church. Basically, that's the threefold breakdown of all people through all of history. 
Uh, there's the Jew. That's uh, people who belong to the nation of Israel. That's the Gentile. That's everybody that's not a Jew. And then there's the church. And what is the mystery and the miracle of the church? It is that God would bring believing Jews and believing Gentiles together. People from totally different backgrounds, different cultures, different systems. He would bring them together. How would he do that? In the person of Jesus Christ. So whether you're a Jew or a Gentile, if you will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he will save you. And when he saves you, he will make you a part of what he's doing in this world at this time, and that is building his church. Would you pray this? Would you pray right now that much people would be added to the Lord? Would you pray that much people of the Jews would be added to the Lord? Pray for Israel. Pray that they will come to know our Lord Jesus as their Messiah. Pray for much Gentile people to be added to the Lord. That's all the rest of the nations of the earth. That's the uttermost to the Jew first and also to the Greek. You see, we've got to start seeing the world like God sees the world. God doesn't look at the world uh, with geographical boundaries. God didn't look at the world with, with cultural or language boundaries. God looks at the world as a world full of souls for whom Jesus died, a world of people who just need a Savior to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And so we see this beautiful advancement. Now, I want to point something out to you. We've come now to Antioch, and there's a shift here because the work of the church in the early part of the book of Acts, was all centered in Jerusalem. In fact, that's where the brethren came from to check out what God was doing in Antioch. They came from Jerusalem. Now the missionary center is going to move to Antioch. And we'll talk more about what God did in Antioch and from Antioch because it's an amazing place. Why would Antioch now become the new sending church, if you will, uh, the, the center of what God was doing because now it's to the uttermost part of the earth? Now it is to the Gentiles. Would you think about your community for just a moment? It's a mix of people, but God loves every one of them. Go after every one of them with the gospel. Remember what we've just studied all the way through Acts 10 and the first part of Acts 11. God is not a respecter of persons. What God has called clean, don't you call unclean. What God has, has set apart, don't you think is common. Wherever you are, God wants to work, and in all of the people that are there, God wants to work. And then look beyond your community. Uh, look beyond your Phoenix and, and your Cyprus and get to your Antioch. Get to the next place. Uh, what is the region that has not yet been touched? Is there a neighborhood? Is there a community? Is there a little village? Is there a neighboring town? Is there a part of your state or, a, or an area of your country that the gospel has not yet permeated, that the message of Jesus has not yet, has not yet come to? And by the grace of God working in you, determine you're going to get the gospel there. You're going to go as far as God will let you go in carrying the message of salvation to all people. And when you just preach Jesus, no matter who they are and no matter where they are, you will see the hand of the Lord with you. You will see a great number believe turning to the Lord. You will see much people added to the Lord. Yes, our God is still at work in this world even in the difficult circumstances. Uh, the message of Christ is on the move, and the Holy Spirit is working in hearts. Let's work with him today. What do you say? To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Though no more scripture is being written, the story of the furtherance of the gospel is being written at this very moment, and we get to be part of that story. The heart of our Savior is as passionate for the lost today as it was just before he ascended in Acts 1. Will you get in on what God is doing in the world today to reach the lost with the gospel? This is why Enjoying the Journey exists, to encourage and to equip you in the work of the gospel. Whether it is through the daily broadcast or the many resources on our website, Scott and all of us on the Enjoying the Journey team are passionate about people coming to know Christ as Savior. We pray that you truly will enjoy the journey, but we also pray that you will bring others with you on your journey of following Christ.